in today's video, um, by popular demand, I'm going to do some more examples of the Pythagorean theorem and of using similar and congruent triangles. Now, I already did a video on using similar and congruent triangles. In fact, I did two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a link right now to the first of those two. If you're still confused after watching this video, you should watch those. And that video also links to some Khan Academy videos. So there are lots and lots of example problems out there for you to look at. Also, a couple of brief announcements. Make sure you check your grade on Aries. Now that I'm home all the time, I'm able to keep it up to date a lot more frequently. So if you finish a bunch of assignments, you can email me and I will update that. You can also email me your questions and I'm gonna highlight this because that would be very, very useful for me. I know that most of the time that I spend streaming is gonna be mostly me sitting and, and looking at an empty screen, I'm sure. So if you email me your questions, I can edit out your name and I can use those questions as sort of a springboard for conversation. So please, please, please send me screenshots if you can. That makes it a lot easier for me to show the class what we're doing. Okay, moving right along, let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. We've got three examples of Pythagorean theorem and one example of similar triangles, and here we go. So here's the first Pythagorean theorem example. We have two points and we are to find what is the distance between these two points. So here is the distance we're looking for. I'm gonna call it D for distance, okay? Now at first, at first it looks like there isn't anything we can do here. Um, I suppose I could bust out a ruler, but I don't, I don't know what the scale is. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a right triangle with sides that I know. I have this tiny right triangle here, and this bottom side is how many units? Well, it goes from negative six to negative three, but we could just count one, two, three. And up this side is one. And now that we've turned this into a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna say that one squared plus three squared must equal d squared. Well, let's see, one squared is one, three squared is nine, one plus nine is 10, which is d squared. And remember, to undo a squared, we square root both sides. So it looks like d is the square root of 10. Let's see, is there any way that we can simplify that? 10 is two times five. Nope, does not look like we can simplify that. So we're just gonna leave it as the square root of 10. Now, just because I know some of you are itching to grab that calculator, I will go ahead and give you a decimal approximation using my calculator. Let's see, the square root of 10 is about 3.16. But I really want you to be able to work with those square roots. Okay, so now that I've done one for you, here is a second example of a similar sort of problem. Once again, we have two points please find me the distance between these two points, which is this distance right there. Please go ahead and pause the video. I really do want you to try this on your own. There is nothing like getting the right answer yourself. Ready, set, go. All right. So we're gonna build a right triangle. Now, last time we built the right triangle underneath, but it doesn't matter which way you go. So I'm actually gonna make my right triangle look like this. There, and there. Still works, right? It's still a right triangle, 
The blue side of this right triangle looks like it's two units long. The red side of this triangle looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units long. So now we can set up the Pythagorean theorem. When 2 squared is 4, 9 squared is 81, that means that d squared is 85, which makes d the square root of 85. Now let's see here. Square root of 85. 85 is 5 times 41. And 41 is actually prime. So we're done. Square root of 85 it is. Hey Google, is 41 a prime number? Yes, it's a prime number. Just checking. You never know. I've been wrong before. Moving on. Here we've got a zip line that starts on a platform that is 40 meters above the ground. The anchor for the zip line is 198 meters from the base of the platform. So this is approximately a two football field zip line. So that's pretty great. So the question is, how long is the zip line? So our distance, D, is right there. Once again, please take a moment, pause the video, see what you can do. Ready, set, go. So I'm going to go ahead and set up and solve the Pythagorean theorem very quickly here. I assume by this point you're all beginning to get this. So I'm going to go ahead and just speed through this problem. So we get that the zip line is 202 meters long. So again, this is an idea that you kind of already know. For example, if you're walking on a path and the path goes like this and you're walking this way and this is grass, most of you Instead of walking all the way around, most of you will instead cut through the grass knowing that this distance is smaller than these two distances put together. You're not quite using the Pythagorean theorem, but you've got this idea in your head already about how right triangles work. We're just building on that. Okay, so now we're gonna do one example from Khan Academy on using similar and congruent triangles, and it's this one right here. We are looking for the length of HD, so this is the length we're looking for. We know that part of it is nine, so if we can figure out what this bit is here, we can solve the, we can solve the problem. Okay. So once again, the most important thing to do in problems like this that look very complicated is to separate and simplify, okay? We've got one triangle that looks like this, okay? So we're gonna take that triangle and we're just gonna scoot it over and make it by itself. Okay, again, my diagram isn't perfectly proportioned, but that's okay. Now this small triangle has a base of x, right? That's right, right here. And it has a height of six. That's that right there. The larger triangle looks something like this. And it has a base of nine. That's that right there. And it has a height of 27. That right there. 
So now that we've got our simplified diagram, we don't need the complicated diagram anymore. We can just look at these two, and hopefully it gets pretty easy. In fact, take a look at this. If I look at this 27 to this 9, it is being divided by 3, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. That means the same thing. So for this triangle, we are also going to divide by 3, or multiply by 1 third. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So 2 is our answer, right? Well, no. That 2 is only part of the answer. If we go back to the original question, we notice that we're looking for the length of HD. We found the length of HP, this small section right here. So we just add the two together. The length of HD, remember when I don't put a, um, when I don't put a segment bar up here, it means the distance between H and D, the numerical distance. It's not talking about the line segment, it's talking about the distance between those two points. And that equals 11. So that's it for today. Make sure to check out the Khan Academy this evening. Take a look at what you're behind on. And remember, this works much better if you take 30 to 45 minutes a day to work on Khan Academy rather than pushing it off for two weeks and trying to get it all done in one frenzied sitting. It just won't work that way. Thanks very much for watching, and class dismissed.